dear, Bish dear Bishop Baika, teacher Baker, priests, de deacons, religious sisters, everyone welcome to these beautiful days in which we will be reflecting on the gift of the Eucharist and the parish. A todos los hermanos de habla hispana, bienvenidos a estos días en que vamos a reflexionar en el don de la Eucaristía y de la parroquia. Divine Providence have chosen that I'll be the one to give this introduction, so I hope I can give a little bit of what is to be given about the Eucharist. St. John Vianney said that the Eucharist is the gift of the sacred heart of Jesus, the gift of his love. God is love. In the encyclical Deus Caritas says, the first encyclical of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, he called us to discover the face of Christ in the Eucharist but not to do it alone. He called us to discover the face of Christ in the Eucharist with Mary. He directed the gaze of the whole church to contemplate the true face of God, this true face of God that we need to proclaim to our contemporary world. God is love. He said in very beautiful words, God has desired to reveal the novelty, the novelty of his love for men. He has desired and decided to assume a human face, a human heart, a human flesh and blood to assume the whole human being. So therefore, the contemplation of God and the love of God to discover how much he loves us is the way for humanity. It's the way in which the human heart can experience all of our thirst to be quenched. It's the way that our restless hearts can find rest. To contemplate the love of Christ in the Eucharist is the only answer to the inner struggles, confusions and darkness and anguish and shadows and uncertainties even disorientations of the human heart of our world. Only the love of the Eucharist can heal and restore the human heart. God's love can deeply heal us. Yes, we need to be convinced of this reality. God's love in the Eucharist can truly heal us, deliver us, Restore us, elevate us to our greatest dignity. And our greatest dignity is to remember that we were created out of love. We were created to love. And we were created to give our lives out of love for others. To, fee to fully understand our vocation to fully understand our dignity, we, kn we must know, brothers and sisters, what love is. In a world that uses this word with so many meanings, except the authentic one. We must comprehend what love is. We must understand it and experience it because only in that way we will be able to live by it, to make love our path of life and to make 
all of our choices in the discernment of love. And only when we understand that our dignity is to love is that we understand that the greatest dignity of the human heart is to freely and voluntarily love. St. John Paul II told us in his first encyclical, Redentoris Hominis, man cannot live without love. Can any one of you live without love? No, I can't. If we don't understand love, says John Paul II, St. John Paul II, we are incomprehensible. That means we don't understand who we are. Our life is senseless. We don't have a meaning for our life. If love is not revealed to us, if we don't encounter love in our lives, if we don't experience it and make it our own, if we don't participate in the life of love, we do not understand who we are. Love is the true image of God. Love is the reason for the incarnation. Love is the reason for the redemption. Love is the reason for every teaching of Christ. Love is the reason for all the good things that he did while he was here on earth. Love is the reason of the cross. And love is the reason of the Eucharist. As he said to St. Faustina, love has brought me to the altar, and only love keeps me here. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus is present in the Eucharist, truly present in the Eucharist, we must ask ourselves today, beginning this beautiful time of reflection, if Jesus is here for me, out of love for me, and he promised that he will be with me until the end of times. We have a big question to ask ourselves. Am I also present to him? Am I also in front of the tabernacle of every one of our parishes? Am I also in front of the Eucharistic Lord exposed for us so we can discover his true face of love? Am I truly grateful for the gift of the Eucharist or, or maybe I take it for granted? Do I live of the Eucharist? Is the Eucharist the center of my life? The last encyclical of John Paul was Ecclesia de Eucharistia. And he lived in the year, he, he died, I'm sorry, in the year of the Eucharist. And what does that encyclical say, if we have to summarize it in one phrase? The church lives of the Eucharist. If the church lives of the Eucharist, I have to live of the Eucharist. Every single parish lives of the Eucharist. Every single religious congregation lives of the Eucharist. Every movement lives of the Eucharist. Every vocation is born and sustained and protected by the power of the Eucharist. The Lord has desired to reveal his true face, the novelty of love. In the last years, the Holy Spirit has been calling the church first to contemplate the face of Christ with the heart of Mary. 
Second, to rediscover the mystery of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. But how? The church in her wisdom told us how. To rediscover this mystery, we need to sit at the school of the heart of the Blessed Mother, the Mother of the Eucharist. And John Paul told us in that encyclical, only Mary can guide us towards the most holy sacrament because she herself has a profound relationship with it. John Paul also called us before he died to build a Eucharistic culture, which means if we need to translate it in a way that we can understand it, to build the culture of love and life because the Eucharist is God's love among men. It is the life of the world. We need to build a Eucharistic culture. That means that the Eucharist must change my heart, my life, my way of thinking, my priorities, my way of relating. We need to allow a lady, when we sit in the school of her heart, to form us, to mold us, to guide us in an intimate relationship, not just any relationship, in an intimate relationship with the Eucharist because she is the heart closely related to the heart of Jesus, the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. When we enter in the school of Mary, we put ourselves in living communion and in loving communion with Jesus through the heart of his mother. The heart of Mary is the greatest school to learn, said John Paul, about the mysteries of Christ, about the mysteries of his love. And he always asked the, he always asked the question, who can teach us better than Mary about Jesus? One problem that sometimes we have, brothers and sisters, is that we know so much about Christ. We know so much about what he taught. But our lady want to teach us about him, who he is, how is his heart, what are the deepest sentiments of his heart, what are the deepest realities of his reasoning, of the choices that he made. Of course, the Holy Spirit is a divine teacher who leads us to the fullness of truth. But Jean Paul says that among creatures, no one knows Christ better than Mary. No one can introduce us to a profound knowledge of his mystery better than his mother. How much we need to see it in the school of our blessed mother the Immaculate Heart is the school of love for Christ. And she will teach us in a special way to have that love for the Eucharistic heart of her son. It is a school where we learn the art of contemplation. What is the art of contemplation? It's what she did to gaze with love, to gaze with the heart, to keep all the mysteries of Christ, to keep everything of Christ in her heart, to treasure them, to penetrate the mysteries of love and learn to enflesh them in her own life, to make them a way of life. We must learn to gaze at Jesus, not only sit before Jesus. We must learn to contemplate the mystery of love that is revealed to us in the Eucharist. The contemplation of Christ as an incomparable model in Mary, 
said John Paul. There's no one. That means that there's no one that can teach us how to contemplate Jesus in the Eucharist than Our Lady. Because no one like her has ever devoted all of her life to contemplate the face of Christ and the heart of Christ as faithfully and lovingly as Our Lady. We must learn to gaze as Our Lady gazes. Mary lived with her eyes totally fixed on Christ. From the moment of the Annunciation, when she conceived him by the power of the Holy Spirit, all the interior gaze of our Blessed Mother turned to her womb, knowing that within her womb, Jesus was present, and her womb became the beautiful and perfect and humble tabernacle of the Lord. We must learn to gaze at Jesus as she looked at him in adoration in Bethlehem. We must learn to gaze at Jesus in Cana when her eyes looked at him and I don't know what she communicated to him, but he changed his mind. We must learn to gaze at Jesus like a lady when in the finding of the temple, he responded, not in a way that she expected, but in a way that she needed to learn. We need to learn to gaze at Jesus through the eyes of a lady's heart. Can you imagine how she gazed at Jesus on the cross? The suffering eyes of the Blessed Mother. Can you imagine how she gazed, not only because she was looking at the suffering of her son to save us, but at the same moment she had the gaze, the maternal gaze of the one that is giving birth together with her son to the life of the church. Can we imagine the morning of Easter when she saw Jesus radiant in glory, the same Jesus that she held dead in her arms, can we imagine the gaze of Our Lady in Pentecost filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit? But brothers and sisters, can we imagine the gaze of Our Lady when after the ascension, she fixed her eyes on the Eucharist? Now she had to learn to look at Jesus as we look at him in the Eucharist. Can you imagine what she felt in her heart when she heard probably St. John say, this is the body and blood of your son. And from now on, a lady will live in the gaze of humility, kneeling before every altar, adoring her son in the mystery of love of the Eucharist. May we learn in the school of Our Lady to contemplate with our hearts the mystery of love, the face of love of Jesus in the Eucharist. May the Lord bless you. Dios le bendiga.
You have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Together the divine praises. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood, blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. 